Welcome back to the SSL. Tasteless and Wolf here. We're now going on to our third best of three. I really liked what Classic did in that last game. Seems like the Adept is pretty tough to stop, but I, I do like the idea behind the strategy in general. Yeah. You don't have to just use uh, the Adept to try to acquire a third base. You can also uh, you know, combo that with a proxy, sure. with the War Prism, then the Immortals, and it seems like it's pretty tough for Terran to stop. I mean, it's just so difficult with the new War Prism pickup range as well. You can get yeah. those Adepts out, keep them alive, they regenerate their shields really quickly, and then bring them back in, keep attacking, 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 the Terran just falls apart. Now, Alive did a really greedy, risky build. But you made even like a ton of turrets, but you can't you can't have turrets everywhere. Then you spend too much on turrets, and the process just gets ahead because you spent like a thousand minerals making ten turrets. So yeah. it's a really tough build to stop. And um, you know, classic prepared really well. He said in his interview he has a lot more builds planned that he wants to show us. Uh, but we're gonna go into our third matchup of the night, which is gonna be stats versus hurricane, a PvP. And here's uh, stats info. This guy never really um, winning individual league tournaments. Has been a lot weaker in individual leagues than he is in um, like pro league, for example. The only tournament when he ever had was a WECG a Korean qualifier. Uh, unfortunately, that tournament never even happened, so that didn't even really mean anything. Now here is Hurricane, someone who is also very similar to uh, stats in um, Wings of Liberty, was actually very good in team leagues in the GSTL, but not very good in individual leagues, making it to Code S only a few times in his career. I mean, if you look at his career here, some of the stats go back to 2013, the Hong Kong Esports Tournament. Um, you know, not uh, not a ton of stuff uh, going on for him in Korea, not a ton of wins here in individual leagues. <laughs> Again, it is a best of three. PvP, I'm not sure if there is a favorite for this. What do you think? I think there is. I think, think stats. So? I think stats is highly favored here. I think Hurricane... Um, See, I, think, I think Hurricane has a, a, a better shot. I yeah. mean, not, not necessarily... A, well, a better shot than what you're saying. I'm not saying a better shot than stats, but I would still say it's a bit of a toss-up. I mean, it is PvP. It's a new uh, expansion. We haven't seen very many televised PvPs yeah. I haven't just casted yet. a ton of them. But before we go on to that, let's take a look at the interview with the two players. <laughs> Season Korea的战斗，初参기 컨트롤 이번에는 결승에 올라서 우승하는 모습을 보여드리면서 제 한계를 깨는 모습을 보여드릴 테니까 많이 응원해주세요. What's up, guys? We're back. Nice interview there. Stats against Hurricane. The yeah. Adept, of course, changes this matchup as well. It does because uh, you can poke with it, you can harass with it really, really easily. And, um, you know, it's one of those units that really makes you think about how you're going to counterplay it because the shade can be cancelled, which I think is one of the strongest things in the unit. Oh my god, these two Pro Gamer jackets look so cool. They look quite clean, man. Yeah, they're, <laughs> they're like sparkly. really nice. They're like right off the press there. Um, yeah. Very new. Very new, man. That's mint condition right there. Getting ready for Pro League. That's right. Um, <laughs> not a stain at all. Anyways, uh, yeah, PvP, a pretty dynamic matchup. We'll have to see how these two players approach it on uh, our map, which is probably one of the weirder maps we've had here in StarCraft 2. Yeah. And that is loaded up now, so let's get ready. Stats for Hurricane and PvP here at the SSL. The 
Introducing our two players. Our first Protoss down here in the bottom left. In the red, he is Stats. In the upper left in the blue, our other Protoss, Hurricane. Now, Tegas, this is my first time actually casting on uh, this map. Okay, so let, let, let's talk about this map. First of all, this map gets the tasteless signature of approval. Mine as well. I like that it is a very different map uh, from what we've normally seen, and I think we need to have more maps that look like this. I totally agree. I know there's going to be a lot of nerds who are going to bitch on the internet and be like, it's not basic enough for me. But look, I think this allows for some very interesting play styles. I'd like to see every matchup played on this map. Yeah. Uh, although I think a lot of pro gamers not as fond of this, but this is a map where you're going to be constantly expanding to the right, there is a gold base there um, in the center left. Yeah, on an island. On which an is, island. Yeah. And, and that, that, that's that's really cool. I also like to see just more islands in general. Me too. It's um, something we never really had all too much in StarCraft 2. I almost wish we did experiment a little bit with island maps in StarCraft 2. I know that people say it wouldn't be you know totally fair, but I I don't know. I would just like to see how the races operate on island maps. Yeah, me too. Um, another, another thing about this map is the rush distance is insanely short. And it's a two-player map. And the rush distance by air is also short, so I feel like this matchup um, on this map will probably be dominated mostly by early game adepts into Phoenixes. Now, we already see a huge variation in these two builds. So we're seeing Hurricane go for two-gate Stalker, and we're seeing Stats go for two-gate Adept. So they're going to have different tier one units coming out of these gateways. Um, and obviously, the Adept is going to be a lot more flexible uh, when it comes to harassing. And I think Hurricane is probably playing this a little bit more defensively uh, with the Stalkers coming out. Yeah, it's already two diverging paths here. Um, I'm feeling uh, Stats' opener a little bit more, but yeah. let's see if it actually works out. That might be because my brain is hardwired to always think you have to go Adept early as Protoss, but that's not necessarily the case here. Now, the Watch Tower is so important on this map because it gives you so much vision. Now, as you can see, the Stalker can't really deal with the Adepts because they're just going to shade away. He needs to control them, though. But he's just going to come in here and target down now, probes. Remember, Stalkers don't attack fast, so these Adepts can actually get a lot of kills if they want. And this is also Adepts for Light Units. Stalkers don't do bonus damage. That The Mothership Core coming home is so important. But He canceled oh, the shade. Was, yeah, I thought he was going to shade right back out of that, but pretty cool. I guess it's because there was a Stalker there, but either way, he's going to lose this battle. He's going to lose both Adepts with no damage done. Uh, let's see, he might be able to get one probe up. Nope. Nope, never mind. Sorry. <laughs> uh, and he's actually going to gun down the Adept. Really nice play here by Hurricane. And now Hurricane knows that because he spent so much time building Adepts, yeah, he, he can, can actually control <laughs> the natural. Stats was actually going to try to expand behind this, but uh, it's not going to work. He's going to be pressured up into going uh, into his main. And that means that Hurricane's going to get the first expand already. A really cool build here by Hurricane. Hurricane's going to go Robo. Now the Oracle is almost finished. And when that's done, it's going to be able to rocket right across the map because it's such a short air distance, short air distance, short distance by ground. Everything about this map is high intensity all the time. Um, and this Oracle is unscouted because the Watchtower is not controlled. And even if War, I guess he's just outside yeah, of range Yeah, I think he's just outside range of that. The Oracle now coming up here. Nothing really um, to help defend. He does have the Mothership Core here activating that pylon. And over here, an attack on the front of this expansion. Yep. And here comes the uh, the Micro. Better Micro here from Stats, actually. Much yeah, better by, Micro. by a lot. Wow. Um, keeping all of the Stalkers alive. That's going to force Hurricane back. I think he just won a 4v5 Stalker fight. <laughs> that was, uh, well, hold on. We see the Oracle coming up now. He's okay. going to try to dive back in here, getting that, uh, that probe. There's not endless energy on that Mothership Core, so he's got to be really careful. Once again, Hurricane continuing on with the pressure. We don't have a pylon down here or anything else to help defend. Uh, for stats, stats probably going to have to pull back and go onto the high ground. Yep, there's that overcharge, but it doesn't reach um, these units. Now, he can actually target these sentries, oh. but who gets caught? Good micro by stats. I have to say, he's definitely winning the micro battles here. Yeah, he's winning these skirmishes on the ground. That much is for sure. Pylon now coming home. down here, and the Oracle comes back, and that's going to be able to assist with the rest of this attack. This and is a big is win here. Energy? Yeah, he gets it very nicely done, and we may have um, the possibility of the Protoss army getting sandwiched here. Hurricane coming down now. Two more st uh, stats of Stalkers coming in to try to reinforce. Oh my god, this micro is godlike. Stats is out of control, this micro. Now notice the way he pulled that Stalker back while having the rest of his Stalkers fire. He only wanted them to fire because he wanted to keep the attack priority on the firing units so that when the weakest Stalker escaped, then he could pull them back. So they were always keeping the attention of the other Stalkers. Away. Hurricane would have had to manually target to kill it. Uh, and he didn't. It doesn't matter because right afterwards, Stats just attack moved with it and it died, but just that kind of micro is really cool to see at this level. 
right, Oracle just, rotating up here now. Yeah, just a little bit of damage done with this Oracle. Like, he's pressuring more than anything else, but he hasn't gotten very many kills, only four pro kills. Yeah, luckily there for, uh, for Hurricane, because, uh, you know, if he, had, if, he, if, he, excuse me, if he did not handle that very well, he probably could have gotten a lot more. I think Stats is going to try to apply some pressure just a little bit here. Once again, the Oracle comes and pokes in. Uh, not activated, though, so he does back out. Blink is about halfway done here for Hurricane. Important to note, because that's really when uh, it's going to tip the scale and favoritism, I think, for Hurricane coming up here. By the way, both players are cranking out Immortals here. And we only just now have Stats starting his Blink a little bit behind. Actually, a lot of bit behind where Hurricane is. Yeah. Blink... Uh Two-thirds of the way done here for Hurricane, and that means he can pressure. I think Hurricane's idea with this uh, attack was just simply to... Oh, he gets one more probe there. Nicely done. I think the idea was to kind of whittle away at stats as units after he killed those adepts and just have such a tempo advantage that eventually you could just kill him with a blink attack. Um, but I don't think this game is that cut and dry right now, actually. I think it's more its more of um, both players getting this tech, but Hurricane's not going to be able to end the game with it. He's just going to have a slight lead with it, and they can use it to harass a little bit. But because of the way this map is designed, you can't really blink into the main and get out, you know? There's nowhere to blink. You go into the main, you have to go out the same way you came in. There's, there's no way, there's no ground space to the north or to the south of the base, either of them. And you're, you're surrounded by dead airspace. Well, um... Uh Let's see, the Nexus has started up here. This is the, the nature of this map, as both players will always be expanding towards the right. Again, I I love this map. I just like that it, it creates a different feel. It creates a different atmosphere. I was curious if we're going to see a drop there by the Warp Prism um, on that uh, on that island uh, location. I'm not sure if that would ever become a thing on this map, but it does make me think about that a lot. Yeah, it's funny because the, the island can be seen by the Watchtower, so... You can never really hide a base there, but it would create a whole new dynamic of players dropping and harassing. I think it would just become too expensive to maintain uh, in this matchup. Yeah, you'd probably have to just become like more dependent. Oh, it's Stork. Stork, what's up? Down here watching. Kind of an odd shot there. He's just <laughs> standing at a wall. Yeah, he's uh, the coach of Hurricane. So yes, he is, and uh, definitely probably the best coach you can ask for. Oh my God, that's such a risky place to engage into. Yeah, that is a very tight bottleneck that he would be coming through right there. He's gonna have to move around and take probably the longer path. Stats now coming up. He's going to destroy the rocks up here and probably start putting some pressure on um, over here uh, where uh, Hurricane's expansion is. Hurricane. Not in position. It almost seems like Hurricane is gearing up to try to go down through the middle. Yeah, he is. He's going to go down through the middle. I'm not sure what the play is that's correct here. Yeah, this is a bit weird. I think they're both going to end up in sort of a base trade scenario. I think you're right. I think, I think it's we're too, here. Yeah, it's too late now for uh, for Hurricane to turn around. Stats is committing. They're, but no, they're both attacking different locations. We have the second base under fire right here. I think this is probably a better move here for Hurricane to try to put pressure on this. He can get all these probes and then probably blink into the main and start taking out tech. Meanwhile, over here... Oh my God! Okay, he's actually gonna go back. around. Oh, yeah, this is I, a weird choice. Well, no, you know what? I think I think this actually might be really good. He can if he, he can, can kill, if he can kill. catch this army. I think it's smart, but I don't know if he can. Okay, yes, he can with that blink. Caught. Oh man, a lot of stalkers going down. And now he's gonna have to immediately counterattack again. Yeah, I, I think you're totally right, Wolf. I think he has to come back up here, try to put that pressure on. That Nexus, by the way, did survive. Uh, worker count right now, uh, it is in the favor here for Hurricane, but um, you know you can't super saturate. Well, I'm, well, you would be super saturated in your mineral patches if you're trying to to use that accordingly. So yeah, um, I think this is a great play. He can come up here and uh, once again force a cancel now on this Nexus. I think Stats is playing this just overall better. His Nexus is back at home. Is oh no cancel? Oops. Uh, but yeah, that's not good. His Nexus is back at home is uh, is also being rebuilt. Or, you know, like I said, it didn't die. It's By still the way, alive. Hurricane, I think it's smart that he's not over-engaging here. And uh, nicely done, gonna gun down these Stalkers. This is almost checkmate here. The number of Stalkers that have been picked off, the fact that the third base is non-existent right now for Hurricane. I think all he has to do is try to uh, park down here on the low ground, and he's got to contain. I wouldn't even go up there. Yeah, I don't think don't that's what I was say. He can't kill him, but he can eventually overwhelm him. Now, one thing that Stats is missing is Disruptor tech. Hurricane has a Disruptor on the way. That's true. And that Disruptor will be able to kind of uh, at least this is what Hurricane is hoping. The Disruptor will allow him to break out of this base, because if it doesn't, he's going to slowly lose this game. He's playing a losing game now. One thing we haven't talked about at all, actually, Go ahead. which I just noticed, is the upgrades for Stats. Stats has plus two with plus three on the way. Hurricane has no upgrades. His plus one is starting. That's a yeah, weird thing to see on the production that's a, tab. That's a very, very good point. The, uh, oh, man, this is going to be a great catch, and he gets it beautifully done. 
Oh, some Terran players got happy seeing that one Adept come out and just be instantly destroyed. <laughs> yeah, revenge. Um, Stats is going to push out here again. This is and, I, I mean, this is pretty ABC right now for yeah. what Stats has to do. He's just going to come out and stamp out that third base, choke him out resource-wise. The Oracle comes in here and surveys the situation, and immediately Stats blinks on top, gunning down these Stalkers. Catches these Stalkers. Now, this Disruptor is not going to find much because he's out of range, and also these, the unit comp is a Blink Stalker comp. It's so hard to actually use Disruptors versus a pure Blink Stalker yeah, comp. Yeah, like well, it's, it's almost like the Stalker just counters the Disruptor. Yeah. Even though the, the Disruptor was made later on, it's definitely a great response. I think Terran is some a race that has a little bit of a harder time against something as, such as the Disruptor, since um, you know it, it, it's much easier to clump their units together. You can suffer a lot more losses because of it. Once again, the third Nexus coming down here, but the Sand is running out of the Hourglass here uh, for Hurricane. I mean, he, he has to get this base up. He is going into Dark Templar tech. That might be one way to start engineering a bit of a comeback. Sure. Now, this Warp Prism is coming across the map. Now, this is another way you can maybe find some damage. I don't know where the Mothership Core is exactly right now. Another attack upgrade about to finish here for Stats. The Mothership Core comes in now, unloading these DTs. Oh, those are DTs in there, in that Warp Prism. So this is actually going to be able to potentially do a lot of damage until that Observer gets back. He's going to go ahead and kill all of these pylons. The Observer's coming back, but that's not going to be enough. He needs another, uh, you know, group of units. Oh, man, he actually is just going to target down probes. Let's see if this actually does a lot of damage here. Oh, meanwhile, and meanwhile, Hurricane's coming out. This is a bit of a mistake. We might have a blink forward. There it is. Yep. He kills one Disruptor. The second one is still alive. But, you know, he needs to actually use it. It must be on cooldown. It's on cooldown for about one more second. This could be his money opportunity here. Not oh, going to happen. Nice splitting. Not even needing to use that blink there. Beautifully done. The Immortal's coming up now. Uh, continuing to gun that down. Uh -oh, oh, 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 five stalkers. Done. Huge kills there. Oh, my God. This game might turn around if he's not careful. He's every just, disruptor count, every disruptor shot is so important. And uh, preemptive uh, there by, for the uh, disruptor. He needs to get up here. He's got disruptors of his own, Wolf. And there's not a lot of surface area to move around here. Coming out once again, just staying out of range of that disruptor is okay. exactly what he has to do. Here comes the stats disruptor shots. Ooh, he actually messes that one up. Doesn't get anything, but he's got a good angle on this Nexus. Oh, good disruptor shot here on those immortals. And now he's going to go ahead and hit this Nexus. Comes back and dodge another one. Being very patient here is stats. Stats looks like he actually wants to go in for a shove right now. Oh, he oh, blinks forward. He loses like done. eight stalkers. That disruptor shot. He blinks past the disruptor shot, but the second one is going to connect. And this is actually such a crazy game we're watching here. It's almost pure immortal versus pure immortal here now with the high ground advantage to Hurricane. Well, he's backing up now. Uh, it looks like Hurricane might just barely be able to hold on to this. We do have reinforcements on route. Two Immortals right now to one. Now that last Immortal has been picked off. He's going up here. He has to try to choke him out. Oh! Right this expansion. Beautiful connection there with the Disruptor. Two Disruptors for one Disruptor shot. And that is going to be game, I think, Tasteless. I think you're right, Wolf. There's not much else that he can do. GG Stats takes out Hurricane in game number one. So... Looks like uh, we are going to just have Stat taking the lead here. I feel like overall, the uh, the game there that was played was... I feel like I personally felt, like my takeaway from that game is I liked Hurricane's strategy more, but I feel like Stat's execution was much better. He had the way better micro when it came to dealing with those early soccer engagements, and that just yeah. kind of continued on for the whole game. I mean, Hurricane was in a pretty tough spot after we saw... Um, after we saw that Nexus go down, I mean, there's not a lot he can do. No island play there. Too bad. I was kind of hoping privately um, that that would actually that, that would be used there. But um, overall, really cool strategies. Yep. So we're gonna go into Dusk Towers here for game number two to see if Stats can close it out or if Hurricane is going to end up tying this series 1-1. And talking to, to Stork here, you know, Stork isn't here just because he likes watching StarCraft. He's here to take care of his pro gamer. And he's talking about that last game, probably saying like, okay, things were good. Don't get too frustrated. Uh, there were a few key moments where Stats got ahead of you there. Um, maybe probably talking to him about his decision um, to commit with the Blink Stalker so far, because I actually thought Stats turning around might have been a mistake, but I think that's actually what won in that game, turning around with the Stalkers, trapping Hurricane Stalkers, catching them off guard like that.